Yeah, I awesome. am completely outnumbered by <laughs> Pennsylvania natives, Penn Staters, okay. who are like history teachers, buffs with Turner Classic movie <laughs> issues. You married into it. I married into the cool crowd. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> That's the he right doesn't answer. say that in private. <laughs> <laughs> is the History Buzz. Welcome to the History Buzz, where we talk about history over a couple of drinks and let the conversation wander where it may. I'm your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. And today we are chatting with Jared from the Real History YouTube channel. Welcome, Jared. Thank you for having me. Uh, happy to have you. Now, before we get into our conversation and before I introduce our guest, I ask our listeners and our watchers, before we start emptying our glasses, I want to ask you to leave us a review in Apple Podcasts, potentially in Spotify, or you can reach out to us over at thehistorybuzz.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcast, Talk With History, where we, where Jen and I dive deeper into our Walk With History videos and give you a behind-the-scenes look at our history-based YouTube journey. Now, our guest today is Jared, like I said, the host of the Real History YouTube channel. That's R-E-E-L. And Jared provides energetic and insightful cinematic journeys as he explores how the past is portrayed in film. And as of recording tonight, his channel has just over 25,000 subscribers and almost, I just checked this, almost 3, 3 million channel views, which is a pretty cool number. So how are you doing tonight, Jared? That's awesome. I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited to be with you all and uh, share some historical passion with everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now, Jared, I kind of like to kind of open it up to our guests a little bit. So I'm, I'm curious, I'm usually curious to kind of learn about maybe where you grew up, how you kind of came to enjoy and kind of have a passion for history. I've always had an appreciation for vintage things, uh, whether it be okay. old cars, old toys, things that I would find at my grandparents' house. I've always had that love for things that came before me and that eventually evolved into a passion for classic movies and naturally i saw films like the wizard of oz when i was very young uh, but then i shortly thereafter discovered turner classic movies oh my and God. these these black and <laughs> you white and i need to talk yeah <laughs> i did the weekend i've done yeah. turner classic movie weekend in la yeah oh cool. yeah well kindred spirits we are <laughs> Uh, yes. But, you know, I found out that these movies transported me to another time, times when people wore different clothes, they lived in different houses, they drove different cars. And that really fascinated me as a seven or eight year old. That was compounded by my discovery of the movie Gettysburg when I was seven, <laughs> uh, okay. which uh, aired on another Turner network, uh, TNT. Mm -hmm. And shortly thereafter, my very patient parents were kind enough to take me on my first summer vacation to Gettysburg. And it was probably about 110 degrees. Uh, it felt like we were walking summer. on the, the solar surface. Uh, but I, I was absolutely captivated because really for the first time ever, I was able to translate something that I saw in a movie to something that I was seeing in person. And I suspect oh, cool. that's the case for a lot of Civil War historians my age, uh, but I was hooked. And my parents took me there multiple times per year for every year thereafter. And I, I still continue to make pilgrimages there. And 15 years after I saw the movie, I ended up working there as a park ranger. And so I oh. am I am a that's living so cool. representation of how powerful historical films can be because it really dramatically shaped my life. Oh, that's so cool. So are you from the Pennsylvania area? Yeah, I'm, I'm from uh, the Altoona, Pennsylvania area. And okay. I ended up coming back home to my native area. And currently I'm a history yeah. professor at Penn State Altoona. Yeah, I awesome. am completely outnumbered by <laughs> Pennsylvania natives, Penn Staters, okay. who are like history 
teachers buffs with Turner Classic movie <laughs> issues. You married into it. I married into the cool crowd. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> That's the he right answer. He doesn't say that in private, let me tell you. <laughs> so, so that's that's really interesting and everybody has their own story about how they kind of came to be passionate about history so how did that eventually translate into the youtube channel uh so a good friend of mine i also do world war ii reenacting on the side i'm oh, cool. I, I really enjoy taking history beyond the traditional confines of the classroom and whether it be in-person presentations at historic sites or museums or taking it digitally uh, one of my uh, really good reenacting friends, uh, and now my producer, Andrew Collins, uh, I would often go to he and his wife's house, and inevitably we would watch historical movies, and inevitably I would always give color commentary, uh, you know, either <laughs> praising or ripping apart historical films. Sure. And, Can't help it. And eventually he just drew the conclusion why don't we just put a camera in front of you and yeah. share these sorts of observations with broader audiences uh, thus this became a pandemic project of sorts because things were closed oh, okay. uh, we weren't yeah. doing our travels the events that we typically went to were not it's occurring perfect, perfect timing uh, yeah. and, and so that is when we ultimately decided to pull the trigger and embark on this adventure and uh it's How really cool. exceeded our expectations we've only been doing the channel for slightly over a year and uh we've, oh my gosh. We've, we've grown far faster than what we possibly could have anticipated but yeah. i uh i like to think that one reason for that is that we're kind of cheating in a way because we're really working with things that are very much in popular consciousness and within popular yeah. culture we're looking at really famous popular movies uh and so yeah. I, I feel like we're kind of ripping off some of our fellow historians who are starting channels or, or something like that uh but you know ultimately uh historical representations is seen in film is something that has long interested me and the yeah. the fact that you know we read you know one book for every 10 movies we watch and i suspect that proportion yeah. is not getting any better in in our modern age sure. uh, the most successful historical book cannot come close to competing with even the worst historical film as far as outreach is concerned. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I like to think of our channel in part as a as a public service initiative uh, where we sure. par parse fact from fiction and uh, perhaps uh, give people a little bit of clarity on historical films that they might really enjoy. Yeah, well, cool. and, and it's funny because we had actually, after we had started our channel, mm -hmm. right? Again, it was kind of during the, during the pandemic, we started our channel, Um and we had, it had been probably close to a year, mm -hmm. but we had been driving somewhere and Jen was talking about some movie or whatever like that. And she was like, oh, I should, I should make a YouTube channel where I review and talk about, you know, historic <laughs> movies. And then later on, probably no more than a couple months later, we found yeah. your, we found your channel. But mine was going to be a little different. It was going to be like, I was going to talk about how Belle from Beauty and the Beast, if she would have married Gaston, probably would have survived the French Revolution. Right. But by marrying the prince, she's dead. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I was going to do more like Disney, like what could happen? Well, and that's one of the cool things. <laughs> and I think you kind of, your channel just displays that is that there can be channels like History Underground, mm -hmm. right? You know, our friend JD, who's traveling all over the place and yeah. he's doing like really good stuff and his, his videos are fantastic and he's, he's going everywhere. Um, and then there's, you know, the other piece of history where you're talking about more of the popular culture at popularized, you know, as times of history through movies and stuff like that but people who are interested in, in history they're going to be interested in like well hey w was that accurate or was this not yeah, accurate and there's huge crossover there because i mean jd does a ton of band of brothers stuff yeah like the actual locations and and i know i looked at some of your videos you do a ton of band of brothers episode by episode so it's good to know this is what really happened and he goes yeah. and this is what it really looks like you know so yeah. So what what has been kind of some of the some of the more surprising things aside from the growth? I mean, that's twenty five thousand in, yeah, in that period of time. That's amazing. Um, but like as far as community feedback or, or what's something that kind of stands out to you there? 
it's really incredible just to be interacting with people from all over the world. And sometimes, yeah. you know, you, you inevitably get some grumpy comments. Uh, sure. That's just the, the nature yeah. of the Internet. But most of the time, there are often these really profound discussions that are happening cool. in, in the feed below a lot of our videos because uh, people either have a direct connection to the film and uh. or the story related to the film. A lot of the times yeah. when we look at World War II films, our viewers, they share comments about their dads or their uncles or their grandfathers or their yeah. great-grandfathers, yes. uh, and they offer their own sorts of stories. And so it's very organic in a way. And I, I think it adds to the conversation. It adds a, a degree of context to our own commentary. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's very rewarding when you look at things like that. People connect, people share email addresses. Uh, you know, one yeah. person said, oh, well, my grandfather was in this outfit. And then somebody else later on in the comments said, oh, my grandfather was in the same outfit. And oh, you know, cool. as far as I know, they, they started a conversation about their shared familial experiences. Uh, and so seeing yeah. things like that happen in this very spontaneous manner, I think are one of the, the more rewarding characteristics of running this channel as such. That's that's super cool. And I, I think Jen and I would agree working on this channel together, some of the, the most rewarding stuff that we've had the chance, mm -hmm. you know, that, that have come out of it is some of our kind of our, our community, right? The, yes. the community interactions, there's probably like a really good, we've got a, a, a small but powerful core, yes. I'd say, of, of community who interact with us all the time. And again, they've emailed us directly. We've gotten mm -hmm. to know some of them. Um, and I think to your point, that community and the stories and the connections that you see come out of that is really one of the more valuable things of, of doing projects like this. So that's, that's pretty cool to hear that. Um, so I'm going to veer now from your interest in history and kind of how your channel started into something, into a historic topic. And I like to start off with what I call the word association game. 